welcome to the Property Elite podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and co-founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I explore an introduction to cracking. This is relevant knowledge for all surveyors, particularly APC or associate RICS candidates with inspection or building pathology as a technical competency. So what causes structural movement? Buildings move all the time, usually so slight or slowly though that the movement is not noticeable. The physical sign of structural movement is usually cracking to a building externally and or internally. Movement can be caused by one or more reasons. These can be split into causes relating to the structure and causes relating to the ground. Structural causes include shrinkage of building materials such as when mortar, plaster or concrete, which all have a high water content dry out and shrink. Moisture or thermal, so seasonal or weather related movement causing building materials to contract or expand. Poor workmanship or design detailing such as the removal of the chimney breast, overloaded floors or roof alterations. And decay or deterioration of the building fabric such as rotten timbers. Ground-related causes include settlement, where foundations are too shallow or have insufficient load-bearing capacity for the weight of the building, subsidence, where the ground beneath the building is unstable, for example, due to mining or excavation works nearby, trees nearby causing the soil to lose moisture, or prolonged dry weather conditions. Heave where there's upward movement of the ground, perhaps due to clay soil swelling when wet or the removal of nearby trees, which releases a large amount of water into the ground, and finally, defective drainage. Diagnosing the cause of structural movement can be very complex. Where the candidate has building pathology to level three in the APC, such as for a building surveyor, You need to be following the trail, analysing the potential causes of the cracking and advising on the most likely cause or causes alongside remedial works. However, if you only have inspection to level three and no building pathology competency, such as for a commercial real estate candidate, then you wouldn't be expected to analyse a defect. You'd instead be reporting what you saw using comprehensive notes and photographs and recommending that your client seek specialist advice. You can't simply be ignorant to the issue though. You need the requisite knowledge of construction and defects to be able to identify and provide diligent advice to your client. And this is a common area of referral, particularly on the inspection competency. However, a candidate in this position should not seek to give in-depth advice on building pathology as it would simply be outside your scope of experience. So it all comes back to advising or acting within your scope of competence. Know what you should or shouldn't be advising on and how far you can go in giving advice or recommending that a specialist provides that advice instead is key to demonstrating competence. So how can you report on cracking? For candidates with building pathology as a level two or three APC competency, you should keep detailed site notes and photographs of any cracking observed. Cracks come in many forms, such as hairline, stepped, vertical, cracks that are uh, are wider at one end, horizontal cracks, and cracks that mirror internally and externally. The type and nature of the crack is likely to give an indication of its cause. An excellent book to read is A Practical Guide to Diagnosing Structural Movement in Buildings by Malcolm Holland. There's an Amazon link on our website, or I'm sure it'll be available in all good bookshops. You should also record the position and direction of cracks on sketch diagrams or plans of the building elevations. Physical inspection on site should include determining the approximate age of the cracks, so are they clean or has dirt accumulated in the crack, measuring the dimensions and configuration of the crack, recording the materials, finishes and condition of the building materials and wider construction. BRE Digest 251 Assessment of Damage in Low-Rise Buildings provides a helpful guide to assessing cracking to buildings. There are six categories, zero to five, based on the width of the cracking observed and with associated remedial advice. Zero is hairline cracks up to 0.1 millimetres, which are negligible and no action is required. 
One is fine cracks up to one millimeter repaired through normal decoration. Two is cracks up to five millimeters easily filled or repointed and doors or windows which need easing and adjusting. Three is cracks of five to 15 mil which may require opening up and patching or repointing. Four is extensive damage and cracks of 15 to 25 millimeters which may require breaking out and replacing sections of masonry particularly over windows or doors. And five is structural damage, so cracks over 25 millimeters, which are likely to require partial or complete rebuilding. We'd recommend purchasing a copy of the digest from BRE as it's an essential piece of reading and contains a lot of helpful detail and advice. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.